Yep, that's right. I got another keyboard. This time it is the Machinique K600 Lite 96% keyboard with 104 keys. It is uh, going to be replacing my Razer Black Widow V3 as well as my Machinique K500F gasket mounted transparent keyboard which you guys probably saw in the previous video. Now you must be wondering with two perfectly functional keyboards why I decided to swap to this K600 Lite and you know there's actually quite a story to it so let me explain. Now for those of you who know I've been using my Razer Black Widow V3 for a very very long time, um, almost about 3 to 4 years I think now. It is a 100% keyboard with Razer greens, they are clicky, yes I know. Not very popular nowadays but where I, when I grew up Razer was, was a standard almost when mechanical keyboards first became a thing. So you know I kinda stuck with it all the way until 2023. And then I managed to get my hands on uh, this thing, the Machinique K500F. When I realized that you know maybe may, maybe clicky switches weren't one of the best, and uh, although I still very much do like the way that they feel and the spring way that they come with, I, I'd rather not be a uh, walking noise pollution sometimes, and especially in my room or in the office. And that's when I decided to get this it, uh, tactile Otemu Brown. It, these aren't Otemu, my bad. They are GR switches. I've actually never really heard of the GR brand. Not sure if that's an abbreviation for Gatoron Brown. Definitely doesn't feel like it though. And uh, yeah, tactiles were the way to go for me for a while, but there was one slight problem. I really couldn't let go of 100% keyboards. Now this is a 90, this is a 96, hey wait, hold up. Yeah, this is a 96. I think this one might be a 98 as you can see later on. This one essentially has a hundred switches, if I'm not mistaken, a hundred buttons. And uh, yeah, so far it's pretty good. Let's just do a quick sound test. As you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's not bad sounding by any means. It's pretty good. Although, I don't know, a translucent keyboard, I don't know. Some some people really like it. I've had friends who look at it and they would be like, wow, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a novelty, a translucent keyboard. Fully RGB, by the way, although I didn't turn on the lights. Uh, it kind of looks very weird on camera if you guys watch my previous... Uh, keyboard keycap swapping video but the main reason why I actually couldn't really I, I wouldn't say unuse I wouldn't say use it this is definitely usable but something feels missing not even just with the numpad I've just had a re like I've almost had an infatuation with 100% keyboards throughout my entire life like I feel I feel like if some of the keys are missing something is is, is not right you know I've, I've not I'm missing the full package although enough about this keyboard that is why i've been searching high and low for not a 100 percent keyboard because i've eventually started to realize how inefficient and uh unwieldy that they are especially when placed on a small desk i've invested in a 98 percent keyboard and i thought since i got it fresh today why not let me just do a quick review of it and bring you guys along and without wasting any more time let's get straight to the unboxing Fresh out of the box, we already can see the keyboard itself covered in a piece of foam with the Machinique quote, I guess. It's not even the logo, it's a flipping quote. That's that's so bizarre. Alright, and let's just pull that right out of there. Okay, box, I guess you can just really sit it up on my desk. Don't fall over. Okay, there we go. Great. Unbox this foam. This foam I have actually heard people use it for full modding within the actual case itself. I might, I'm gonna keep it for that purpose, although if I do mod this in the future, which I definitely will, I think I'll be using slightly more higher quality materials. And uh, yeah, that's just the keyboard right there in all its glory, the K600 Lite. Um, I'm actually not sure why they call it the Lite. I, I haven't seen the original K600 on the website or on the shopping platform that I went to get this on. But yeah, as you can see, it is a 98% keyboard as it not only retains the numpad, beautiful numpad, everyone knows we need this, engineers. But uh, yeah, it retains the big plus minus button as well as the enter button down here, which you would usually find in a horizontal configuration, but here it's in a vertical configuration. Oh wait, or am I thinking about some other key? Yeah, I think I might be thinking about the zero key. But anyways, point is that it has all these additional uh, keys that you would usually find above the arrow keys somewhere 
on top here in a 3x2 configuration. It has all been compressed up here which is really nice because it makes the keyboard way shorter and I still retain all my buttons and all my very crucial keys. And the, the cherry on top is that since we retain these larger keys, the, the larger key keycaps that come from keycap sets can definitely sit right there. And for you guys who already watched my previous keyboard video, you already know I'm definitely transplanting the the PBT Asuka keycaps onto this sometime in the future. But for now, I'm just gonna be gonna be using it stock, you know, gonna keep things uh, keep things bare bones for a while because that's how I like to roll. Now, looking into the box itself, actually, we do have a few more amenities that we forgot to look at. This, of course, is the uh, user manual probably has all the shortcuts and all the uh, RGB settings, maybe even the control center download key. I don't know. There, There is a software that comes with this, but I'm not really going to go into that today. And as you can see here, it says accessories on this side. We're going to open that up. And that reveals us quite a few things actually. We got a switch puller and keycap puller, as well as some Otemu brown switches that come along with it. We got our keycap puller, always welcome to have one um, for removing our switches. Uh, this is hot swappable, these are 3 pin hot swappable uh, switches. They by default come with the Otemu browns, let me just get the replacements over here. Right, as you can see here, that is indeed an Otemu brown switch. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus on it. There, alright, yes, that is an Otemu brown switch. As you can see, it is indeed a 3 pin connection. I can't, yeah, that is a 3-pin connection, I had to confirm it for a second there. And uh, they have the newer kinds of uh, box stem, box stem shape, I don't know what you call these, but razors, uh, razor switches have them too. Supposedly they allow the switch, the keycaps to sit more tighter on the switches, I think. I don't know, I think they look pretty cool though, and you know, it's, it's always better to have more, I guess, rather than your conventional cross-shaped stem. And uh, yeah, that's basically all the extra accessories we get with the keyboard and now let's actually get into the keyboard itself all right as i mentioned earlier it is an otemu brown switch uh if i'm not mistaken it does have a, a bottom out force of 60 grams and an actuation force of around 45 or 50. i have used it a little bit uh, if, you, if you have noticed the minor cuts in this video and so far i must say it is it might be the best keyboard feel i've ever felt so far i mean definitely clickies are going to be like the the ideal feel for me although they do come with some annoying sounds and everyone keeps telling me that you know I'm a bit of a, a bit of a plebeian a bit of a scrub for using them but to each their own I guess but yeah this definitely feels better than the uh, GR crystal switches that were found on the other translucent keyboard also by Mashinike and uh, they're they come with standard double shot ABS keycaps um, so far nothing to complain about them although I definitely will be swapping them out in the future as well as modding the absolute absolute hell out of this keyboard let me know if you guys actually want to have that be a series i might be might be considering doing that although i don't really record a lot of uh, uh real life videos and yeah it comes only in a wired connection uh, we cannot do bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz with these although personally i am a firm believer of having a wire connected keyboard for minimum latency i kind of don't believe in wireless tech. Yes, I know my mouse is wireless. That is the only thing I've compromised on. But other than that, keyboards for me, they, they gotta be wired, you know. They're not wired. Some some witchcraft is going on. Okay, I sound really old and why did I say that? <laughs> but anyways, right. Um, I guess the only thing now to do is to sound test it and as well as uh, do some tests on it to see if it holds up to my standards. So far, yeah, I think it, uh, it's actually pretty good. Um, definitely quieter than any other keyboard I've owned before. Let's do a spacebar test. It's actually pretty, it's pretty nice sounding. I might do a close-up of that. Don't know if you guys can hear it. Tab is really good. 
Enter sounds decent. Arrow keys are there. Backspace, most importantly. Little bit of a sharper sound, but that is to be expected of Otemu Browns, actually. They are a little bit known for their... Uh, I wouldn't say muted sound. Um, it's almost... If you listen really closely, there is almost... There is definitely, not almost, there is definitely a sound of the spring release. Let me just see if I can uh, get a closer sound on that. Now getting closer to the keyboard, we can actually see a little bit of its uh, RGB detail. And uh, I almost forgot to explain, this is actually, um, I'm not too sure if it's a tray mounted or a top mounted keyboard. I guess I'll figure out pretty soon when I do open it up. Not in this video though, I'm going to be keeping it stock like I said. But uh, yeah, very different from gasket mount actually, which doesn't give it a more muted sound as you can hear. Let me see if I can get that spring sound. Spacebar, tab, caps lock, shift, backspace, whatever this is, enter. Stabilizer seem to be pretty smooth as far as I can tell. And uh, yeah, I guess that's how Otemu Browns feel. Uh, I definitely did consider getting other switches. In fact, I might actually, the first mod might actually be switches. I've been looking at Otemu Limes and uh, Aqua Cream V3s. Other really good tactile switches, um, definitely I, I need tactile. Um, I'm an Osu player, linears just, I don't know, they don't cut it for me. They make for a very uh, refined artisan typing experience, but for a gaming slash all-purpose keyboard, I definitely think this is going to be everything that I've ever wanted it to be. And for me, I always thought I could never let go of 100% keyboards thanks to uh, all these fine instruments right here, but definitely whoever is a 100% keyboard believer just like me, I would definitely recommend you try out a 98 or even a 96% keyboard. And so far, I think that covers everything we need to know about this keyboard. Overall, I have not used it that much, but like out of the box for its price, you can definitely get it around under 40 US dollars. I think under 30 US dollars is possible. This thing is extremely affordable. Uh, Mashinike is a Chinese affiliated brand from China, but that doesn't say much about its quality really. I mean, stereotype, stereotype, all China products are cheaply made and mass manufactured, but so far, so far, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, if there's any long-term issues, I might make another video covering that. But yeah, that is the general review of the uh, Mashinike K600 Lite. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I guess we will end with an Osu test.